Hello Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be going over my recommended Dual Thrustmaster T16000M bindings for Alpha 3.8. Alpha 3.8 went live on the 21st of December, and with it came new ship functions and their associated binding options. It also came with a ton of new bugs when it comes to mapping, importing, and exporting bindings. Honestly, this has been one of the most difficult patches to work with since I started doing these videos, which is why it took me so long to get this video out. But I think I've finally settled on a set of bindings that will work for most people. So without further ado, Let's get started by going over the new functions for Alpha 3.8. The first new function is the updated Look Ahead mode. The new Look Ahead mode makes your flight experience more immersive by making your character's head move around realistically based on your flight inputs and ins external factors such as G-forces and horizon orientation on planets. It also allows people without head tracking to better keep track of where their ship is going and where the ship is. The experience can be fine-tuned and customized via a set of toggles and sliders in the options menu. The new mode also came with two new functions you can map to your joystick. The first is enable slash disable look ahead, which allows you to toggle the mode on and off. The second is look at target, which is a toggle function that does just what its name implies. In order to use look at target, you must have an enemy targeted and be facing in their general direction before pressing the button. Your camera then locks onto them until they fly out of your head's range of motion, target lock is lost, or you press the button again. The third new binding is a long-awaited deselect target function. Obviously, this clears your selected target, which is extremely useful, not only when using the new look at target function, but also for getting rid of that pesky ESP auto steer when you don't need or want it interfering with your intended flight path. One such example is when flying towards a station to land. If you have a ship targeted in front of you, ESP will try to pull you off course and towards that target, which can be extremely annoying. So now you can simply hit this new button and not have to worry about it. Now let's look at the changes to my recommended dual T16000M bindings 438. First of all, you may have noticed I've changed the modifier from left alt to right control. This is due to a new bug in 3.8 that seems to be confusing legacy alt and left alt on some keyboards. The new modifier should work for everyone, but if you're still having problems, let me know and I'll try to work with you. A happy side effect of this change is that it will reduce the chance of someone accidentally closing the game when cycling their camera view with F4. Another change that can be found in joy to key is that I have had to map the right trigger to the mouse left click. This is due to an annoying bug when importing bindings that causes any function bound to button 1 to fail for some reason. Most of the functions bound to button 1 are the same as mouse left click anyway, so this was an easy fix. Due to these changes, if you've been using my bindings for a while, you'll need to update your joy to key profile to the latest version in order to use my exported bindings. That profile can be found in my Dropbox link in the description of this video. You'll also need to make sure that you're using the latest version of joy to key which is currently version 6.3. For button bindings, I've added the new look ahead toggle to button R7. This of course required me to move the headlights function to modified left hat up, which is actually a better place for it since it's easier to access in flight. As you may remember, modified left hat up and down used to be bound to the acceleration limiter, but there's another new bug in 3.8 that makes it so you can't use a modifier for this function, so it was moved to buttons L9 and L10. Buttons L9 and 10 used to be the VTOL thrusters and landing system, so they were moved to modified R2 and modified R4 respectively. I kept them close together because they're often used in conjunction with each other, and the quicker access makes it easier to perform some advanced maneuvers using the VTOL thrusters. Due to yet another bug that causes a conflict between missile lock and launch and the landing gear function, I moved missile lock launch to modified R3. 
modified R2 was previously mapped to the quantum travel system, so that function was moved down to button R8, and cycle gimbal mode was moved up to button R4 for easier access during combat. The new look at target function seems pretty useful, and it needed a home, so I put it on modified right hat up. Likewise, I needed a place for deselect target, so it was added to modified right hat down. These spots were previously used for cycle sub-target and reset sub-target, but I found that these two functions can be placed on the same button. Therefore, I moved them both to modified right hat right. In order to use these functions, you have to hold the left trigger modifier and tap the right hat to cycle sub-targets. You can then hold the same button to reset your targeting to center mass. Modified right hat right was previously used to cycle hostile targets back. However, this function was not critical, so it was removed to make room for the others. The last change was made to the open close doors function. I found this function extremely useful when performing a hot drop at an LZ during certain bunker missions, so I made a few changes to make it more accessible. The close all doors function is still bound to button R5, but I moved the open doors function to button R10 for quicker access. I then moved the lock doors function to modified button R5, and modified button R10 is still bound to the unlock all doors function. And that's about it for the binding changes, but before we close the video, I want to go over some of the known issues and workarounds in Alpha 3.8. When it comes to importing my bindings, there are a few issues that have been popping up lately. First is that previous bindings will sometimes interfere with the new bindings. In order to get around this issue, make sure to use the clear all bindings function in Star Citizen. You only need to clear the joysticks, not the keyboard, not the mouse. Another possible fix is to delete your user folder before importing my bindings. This will give you a clean slate to start with. The second common bug is the tendency for some functions and buttons to not bind properly. The most common functions are pitch, roll, and yaw. To fix this, you'll have to go into the bindings menu and add these functions manually. Simply hit escape, options, key bindings, advanced, and scroll over to joystick HOTAS. From here, click on flight movement to reveal pitch, roll, and yaw. Click on each function and move the joystick axis you want it bound to. I personally recommend X, Y, and Z to be bound to yaw, pitch, and roll respectively. This improves joystick weapon aiming and accuracy in Star Citizen. However, some may prefer roll to be on X and yaw on Z, as this is how flight sims are typically set up. I'll leave it up to you to decide which is best for you. A third issue people have been reporting is that after importing my bindings, their F interaction and enter open chat function stop working on the keyboard. This can be fixed by resetting your keyboard and mouse back to default after importing my joystick bindings. Another bug I found is with the power increase and decrease functions. These functions currently do not work when bound to the joystick or the keyboard. However, these are useful functions, so I left them bound in Hope CIG will eventually fix the issue. The workaround is to make your changing using the power MFD as required. This function can be useful for lowering your EM and IR signatures as well as reducing heat during quantum travel. And that about wraps up this update. I hope you found it useful. If so, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for future content. Maintaining these bindings requires a lot of time and effort on my part, and even though I don't monetize this channel in any way, having subscribers and regular feedback motivates me to keep the making these videos. All the usual bindings and configuration files can be found in my Dropbox by following the link in the description below. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.